and we thrive because of it. That synergy that exists between the wonderful University of Illinois and our business community that make us stronger. Innovation Celebration recognizes those individuals and organizations that have made significant contributions, taken risks, and provided leadership to ensure continuing economic success of Champaign County. They represent the ongoing mission of the University of Illinois for economic development and the growth of the entrepreneurial talent and energy in our community. Ten awards will be given out tonight to recognize the various ways in which individuals and organizations utilize their innovation, creativity, and leadership in their entrepreneurial endeavors and create an economic impact in our community. I'd like to thank the sponsors that made this event possible including the Champaign County Economic Development Corporation, the Research Park at the University of Illinois, the Technology Entrepreneur Center, Parkland College, the Office of Technology Management, the Office of Corporate Relations, the Academy for Entrepreneurial Leadership, NCSA, Sarah Ventures, Hanson Financial, Ramshaw Real Estate, Surface 51, and Singleton Law Firm. Did I forget somebody? support of many organizations and companies in our community to make this event possible and I hope one that you'll thoroughly enjoy but it took a committee putting it together and I'd like to ask the committee members to stand up that help put this event together and I'd like to give a special round of applause to Liz Kellner from Singleton Law Firm who worked astounding in the amount of detail and attention that she put into making all of this happen and getting everybody on board. So thank you, Liz. I would like to now introduce Mike Kirchhoff, who is the CEO of the Champaign County Economic Development Corporation, to share a few remarks about our community. Thank you, Mike. Good evening. Hello. Let's do that one more time. Good evening. <laughs> Great. Welcome to Innovation Celebration 2013. As President and CEO of the Champaign County Economic Development Corporation, I'm excited about this evening's event as we celebrate and honor those who make entrepreneurship thrive here in Champaign County. To our great fortune, we live and work in a community with a multitude of innovators and entrepreneurs. Through passion, creativity, and excitement, they amplify the energy and accelerate the momentum of our entire region. This event also symbolizes the partnership between the community and two of our most important assets, the University of Illinois and Parkland College. It's no coincidence that Yahoo, Wolfram Research, Newstar, John Deere, and all of tonight's finalists have decided to locate in our community. After all, we have the world's fastest supercomputer. We invented the web browser and the LED. Our research park was recognized by its peers as the most outstanding in 2011. We're a nationally awarded gigabit broadband infrastructure community. Oh, and one of our finalists this evening, Oso Technology, where are you, Oso? Oso Technologies, was recently referenced in David Letterman's top 10. <laughs> CBS This Morning, and The Drudge Report, which, you know, if you make The Drudge Report, you're, you've arrived, so, uh, during the week of February 4th. Champaign County is a great place to live and work, and we're even better because you chose, all of you chose to be a part of it. Congratulations to all of tonight's finalists. Welcome Leslie Miller from the Office of Technology Management. She is responsible for tech transfer at the University of Illinois Urbana campus and all the patenting and licensing associated with the university. 
Thank you, Laura. Uh, well, good evening, everyone. It's my privilege uh, to serve as the director of the Office of Technology Management, uh, affectionately known as OTM. And we have responsibility for managing uh, the wonderful intellectual properties that arise out of the cutting edge work of faculty and staff on the Urbana campus, some of which you're going to see reflected tonight in a selection of the nominations. Um, this is the second year that the OTM has supported these two awards. Uh, Innovation Discovery, which is for groundbreaking research with potential for significant societal impact, and Innovation Transfer, for those who have engaged with the OTM to successfully com commercialise a new invention. I like to think that even in administration, one can be innovative, surprising though it may sound. And so we have been um, in how the finalists were selected. This year we asked members of our OTM advisory committee, a group of faculty and administrators to review the 19 nominations received from across the campus from a broad range of departments, from food science and human nutrition, entomology, education, chemistry, physics and a cadre of different engineering departments. So I would like to thank uh, the eight members of the advisory committee who evaluated the submissions for their work in coming to a consensus on the finalists and the winners. And I would also like to thank the nominators, everyone who actually submitted a nomination t tonight, uh, without whom we would, not, we would have no awards. So without further ado, uh, to announce the winners and present the awards, I am pleased to introduce the Chancellor of the Urbana campus, Phyllis Wise. It is such a pleasure to be here. I'm really excited about this evening. It is one of those great partnerships between the community and the university. Um, the Innovation Celebration is an important event for Urbana-Champaign, uh, its entrepreneurial community, and certainly to the campus. The university has been closely involved with Innovation Celebration over the years, and last year we broadened the partnership further by adding two awards specific to the campus community the Technology Transfer Award and the Innovation Discovery Award. Both awards are moderated by the Office of Technology Management. The Innovation Discovery Award recognizes an individual or group from the University of Illinois whose research has resulted in either a discovery or a work with a potential significant societal impact. The Innovation Transfer Award recognizes an individual or group from the University of Illinois whose invention or work has been successfully transferred into the public sphere. I have the privilege today to present both of these awards and to introduce you to the three finalists for each one. And let me say I'm just glad I'm just making this announcement and I wasn't on the awards committee because uh, I, I don't know that I would have ever been able to decide on any three, much less the one person that will get the award. The entire pool of nominations for both awards this year was deep and impressive which is, I hope, exactly what you would expect from a research community like ours at Illinois. For 146 years now, this <coughs> campus has been the home of social scientists, humanists, scientists, and engineers who led the respective fields in tackling the grand challenges of the day. Those challenges in the technology and methods we might employ to face them may be dramatically different today, but the spirit of innovation and the drive to push back the edges of what we know and what we can uh, do remains the same. There's no doubt that the primary driver of the future economy and the creation of jobs will be innovation. And frankly, that will also be the cornerstone of the best public universities, public and private universities, in the next century. New ideas, new perspectives, new solutions, these are the expectations of the world for the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. These are indeed exciting times, and today's innovation celebration is a key part of how we position ourselves to what I think will be a great era of innovation in the United States. So it's now my great pleasure to present the Innovation Discovery Award. As I read the names of the finalists, will each of you please stand? The three finalists are Yoram Bressler, a professor at the 
computer engineering with an appointment in the coordinated science laboratory for his inventions of new algorithms that can dramatically speed the image of reconstruction in computed tomography CT scans. The second uh, finalist is Martin Burke, an associate professor of chemistry whose innovations in synthesizing organic compounds has the potential to radically change the processes by which we discover and manufacture new drugs. And the final uh, nominee is Jean-Pierre Le Breton, a professor in electrical and computer engineering for his design in com uh, semiconductor membranes that mimic human cell membranes and open up new horizons for everything from DNA sequencing to homeland security. So you know now why I'm glad I didn't have to select the winner. <laughs> the winner for the... Innovation Discovery Award is Professor Martin Burke. Thank you. We're a platform for making what's called small molecules, which are the types of molecules that are most medicines uh, comprised of. It uh, takes the process of making medicines and makes it much simpler and faster and more flexible. We started the group here in Illinois kind of with that mission. You know, could we discover and develop small molecules, so new type of medicines that would actually replicate the function of missing proteins, almost like a prosthesis on the molecular scale, if you will. And a big part of that process is the time it takes to make the new compounds that you want to test. And what our advance is having an impact on is it speeds up that process. And so hopefully rather than taking five years to explore all the different types of structures, if you could cut that down to two or three years, you know, that's that much faster of a time frame in which new drugs can be developed. There's now about 130 of our building blocks have been commercialized. Uh, and it's really kind of taken off uh, quite powerfully. Um, there's more than 70 different pharmaceutical companies throughout the world that have used our chemistry now. And in fact, there's already one case where one of our building blocks is already being used to make a new medicine that's actually in people in a phase two clinical trial. So for me, um, you know, we get excited about a lot of things, uh, like publishing papers and these types of things, but the number one thing I guess I'm most excited about is that the chemistry's actually made it into the real setting being used to make a medicine that's actually being used to treat patients. Our goal is to try to have that kind of an impact, right? Because at the end of the day, that's really all that matters. Wow, thank you so much. Uh, I guess the most important thing I would love to express is that I think it expresses something tremendously uh, important about our community that this night even exists. <coughs> So I first want to congratulate the other nominees. Uh, it's very humbling to have been the one to be uh, selected. And there's a couple of people who are here that I would also like to uh, take the chance to thank. So one of the things that I think makes UIUC so amazing is that we hold our priorities uh, such that innovation and discovery are the things that we get most excited about. Uh, and of course, this doesn't happen in a vacuum. Uh, it takes a team to create such an environment. And I experienced that from the minute uh, when I got here. So as an assistant professor, uh, one of the first people I met actually was Roger Van Hoy, who I think is here tonight, uh, who uh, knocked on my door and walked in and shook out his hand uh, and said, you know, I'm from the Office of Technology Management. We're here to do everything we can to help you uh, translate that which you discover into uh, applications. And it really sent a very powerful, strong message that I soon quickly learned uh, is what uh, Leslie Miller does when she gets a powerful group of people together is to create an environment that is incredibly conducive uh, to enabling us as the scientists working away in our labs to try to have things translate to an impact. Uh, once Roger had moved on, I had the tremendous privilege for the last several years of working with Lisa Dar, who has just been absolutely instrumental uh, in enabling us to transform so many of the things uh, that we've discovered into actual application. And for this, I'm tremendously grateful. So uh, thank you to the Office of Technology Management. Uh, thank you to the Selection Committee. It's a tremendous honor to have been selected. Um, and on behalf of my students, uh, thank you so much for recognizing our work. Thank you.
Next, I'll present the Innovation Transfer Award. And again, as I read the names of the finalists, would you please stand? The three finalists are Joram Bressler, who is, uh, who is standing moments ago as one of the Discovery Award finalists. His nomination in this category is for his success in putting his algorithm discovery into clinical practice through his company, Insurecon. I hope I pronounced that right, Incorporated. Uh, second nominee is John Del Sasse, an associate professor in electrical and computer engineering for his success in moving his new fabrication process for semiconductors to the market. And the third is William King, a professor in mechanical science and engineering for his success in moving his process for creating large scale mi microstructured and ultra low friction vehicular surfaces into the commercial market. And the winner for the 2013 Innovation Transfer Award is Joram Bressler. Uh, the technology is a uh, method to accelerate the formation of images in CT, some people call it CAT scan. Uh, today, CT is a workhorse of uh, medical diagnostics. That's the way doctors look into uh, the inside of people without cutting them open. The problem is that there's a lot of data that these instruments create and that data needs to be formed into an image. Using our technology we can accelerate that and produce the results faster and cheaper. Right now we have addressed a smaller, maybe a niche market, which is micro CT scanners. So the guys who get scanned there are tiny mice or uh, experimental pieces that are studied for uh, research or for uh, industrial uh, quality control or for reverse engineering or uh, material science. So this is a scientific instrument for the most part that can image very tiny things at tremendous resolutions. Uh, so this is a product actually now in the market that's available to users buying these micro CT scanners. And so far the contribution has been to accelerate really the research to enable people to do faster research in, for biomedicine. And right now actually we, we are working with Carl Hospital uh, for ideologists to look at the images we produce and to evaluate their quality and to provide us guidance as to what they need and what uh, they're looking for in images uh, to be able to do better diagnostics. Our next steps are actually to develop products for the medical market. We're uh, working with some of uh, the big, the major producers of CT uh, equipment to insert this technology into their products and that's, that's what I hope uh, will be the, the next step. We'll actually have a product that goes into scanners in hospitals and, and contributes to healthcare. Thank you very much, uh, Chancellor Wise. Thank you uh, very much, uh, Selection Committee. Uh, I've benefited uh, a lot from the support of uh, many people in the community, and I'd like to, to thank them, and I won't go through individual names at this point. Uh, technology transfer, which is what this award is for, doesn't happen by one person. Uh, this is the work of uh, the team that works uh, at InstaRecon, our company, and that team is the one that made it happen. Uh, with me perhaps providing the initial spark. So I wish to thank them. Uh, OTM has been also very helpful. Uh, when I first started the path of uh, filing the invention disclosures and patents, I was a total novice in uh, technology transfer and business. I think I learned a lot by interacting with OTM. And OTM has been, has been supportive. I've heard horror stories about, from other schools about how difficult it is uh, to negotiate with universities, uh, to have a license to develop technology in the company. Uh, this has not been the case here. I felt a great support and openness, and I thank, I'm thankful for that. Um, I'm really excited about uh, what we're doing. I think uh, the prospects are always bigger than what we have achieved so far, and I'm hopeful that we'll actually deliver and make a real change in uh, the medical market and in terms of impro improving uh, uh, patients' outcomes. Thank you.
congratulations to Yoram and to Marty. And thank you to the Office of Technology Management for making those awards possible and Chancellor Wise for presenting them. I would like to now introduce Seamus Riley, the Vice President for Institutional Advancement at Parkland College. He is here to present the Parkland Innovation Engagement Award. Parkland College has more than 100 degree and certificate programs designed for career and job placement that really impact our economy locally. Parkland College enrolls 18,000 students annually. And here is Seamus to talk about one of their best. Thank you very much, Laura, and to the uh, committee for involving us in this award on behalf of President Ramage. <clears throat> we're delighted to participate and we're delighted to uh, be in such uh, uh, incredible company. Uh, and it's my honor to introduce Don Burfield. At Parkland, we uh, plant the seeds of innovation and we hope that they become transformative and that our students go on to great things. Uh, Don Burgfield exemplifies this both in his championing of students and also in his uh, innovation and in engaging those students in transformative activities that have taken them away from our shores uh, to Costa Rica uh, to learn about sustainability. Uh, the students come back transformed from the experience. It has led to many innovative practices at Parkland under Don's leadership, uh, particularly in the area of sustainability and the construction of a sustainable farm at, uh, at Parkland College's uh, just to the west of our campus. So uh, I'm uh, delighted to uh, be here and to recognize Don Burgfield for his contribution to innovation and engagement on behalf of Parkland College. I am the Agricultural Program Director and so as a part of that, I can have, uh, have some um, oversight in what goes on in the program, description classes and that. Advising students is one of the things I like to do, helping them kind of figure out what courses they should be in and, and how they're going to progress through their career at Parkin College. It's being able to show and demonstrate those practices that are useful in real life. So one of my biggest thrills, I guess, is when I find out a student is going to be taking a full-time job with an ADM or um, an Anderson's elevator or a local greenhouse or something like that. So it's uh, it's being able to see the students develop into young adults and productive adults. But through the whole sustainable thing, I've kind of relearned and think about what I'm teaching my crop science class. I thought about uh, three years ago about teaching these students how to grow corn and soybeans, primarily alfalfa and wheat as well, and crops in general, but I'm not really teaching them how to feed themselves. And that got to be kind of a concern for me because if a student leaves a crop science class, they should at least be able to know how to plant some very basic things that they can eat. And we don't eat the corn that we can raise around here as corn. We eat it and everything else maybe that we're eating, but not as corn. And so I talk about how, you know, if you're planting a turnip, how deep should that turnip go in the soil? Uh, as opposed to a corn seed that's going to go in far deeper because it's a larger seed. And so what does it take to get it to germinate? And then what kind of fertility does it need? Just the uh, whole idea of being able to help people think and, and enjoy talking about what I've done and uh, what I've learned. Thank you. Uh, I'm in awe of the other people here in this room. Uh, just a, a farm boy from Arcola, <clears throat> but I had an opportunity to go to Parkland College and that gave me a, a chance to uh, get an education and actually go back and teach now. And so I'm, I'm actually being able to uh, live a passion in agriculture. I want to thank Seamus for all his support in the study abroad programs. Uh, my department chair, Bruce Hendrickson, is here as well, and he listens to all my crazy ideas. And I want to thank the students at Parkland College for coming to the class and letting me share my platform on agriculture. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Congratulations, Don. It is now time to present the Community Innovation Awards, and the first tonight will be the Social Entrepreneur Award, which recognizes individuals that have served as change agents in our community, implementing entrepreneurial principles to address social concerns. And the finalists are the Illinois Green Business Association, which is helping local companies and organizations to implement green practices, reduce energy consumption, and, and reduce their environmental impact. They have developed a certification program for green businesses and host countless number of events in our community to build awareness about greener practices. 
the Idea Store, which provides a store with reusable items to incorporate in crafts, classrooms, artistic endeavors, and much more. They've received donations from across the community and put them in a marketplace of ideas. The proceeds help the Champaign-Urbana Schools Foundation and improve our local schools. Illini for Kids, which worked with the University of Illinois STEM Education Office and Unifor Schools to establish a pilot of eToys, a computer programming environment to encourage students' interest in computing. And the winner is the Illinois Green Business Association. IGBA is, is the Illinois Green Business Association. It's a nonprofit organization that helps businesses find the economic and environmental benefits of greener practices. We uh, started the organization as students at the University of Illinois, um, and we were working on a lot of different multifamily recycling issues at the time, and uh, applied for grants out of facilities and services, uh, the Building the Lasting University Environment Grant. Um, and we got posed the question, we are gonna do a green guide for students, but we got posed the question, Green Street isn't that green. How do you green Green Street? And so that was kind of a challenge for us. How do you, how do you green Green Street? What kinds of components would you need? And that's where we came up with the idea for the Illinois Green Business Association. We saw a lot of models on California that were governmental organizations, but we thought we needed a nonprofit so that we could have a lot of different stakeholders come together and support businesses and support sustainability in business. Um, and we really thought that it was beneficial to have hands-on services because business owners are busy. Uh, they have a lot on their plates. So if there's something that we can do to help sustain businesses and also help them reduce their costs without even selling a product and help really keep small businesses thriving and alive, um, we wanted to take that on. It's exciting to really work with a lot of different business owners um, and learn how they run their businesses. Every business is unique. We're really excited to be able to be making a difference and to be a part of that piece of uh, helping bring our economy here in Illinois. much um, for the award. Thank you to the committee. Thank you to um, our community. Really, um, coming as students out of the University of Illinois, we found the University of Illinois supportive, but we found the local community even more supportive as well. Um, I want to thank some of our board members uh, that are here tonight. Mike Royce, Don Schler, who's our current board president, and Tim Montague. If I missed you, I didn't see you, I'm sorry, but um, thank our board because they were the foundation supporters for the IGBA. They empowered us as young people and students to say we can really make a difference and we can really make a change. Um, and the infrastructure here uh, and the community here fosters that change. So uh, I encourage and I tell everyone that I talk to that Champaign is such a unique community because it fosters new innovations and new ideas. So we're excited to be um, award winners, but everyone in this room helps that make that change happen. Uh, so thank you very much. Um, and I couldn't have done it without my staff members, having them supporting uh, the organization. We couldn't have done it without the businesses and all the people we asked advice uh, to help us along the way. Thank you very much. Congratulations, Illinois Green Business Association. The next award is the Student Startup Award, and we have an amazing group of students at the university that come up with not only the latest mobile app or something that might be in the electronic space, but a lot of things also that address grand challenges. And all of those have opportunities to succeed here in this community. And tonight we're gonna highlight a few of those. These are students that within the past three years have demonstrated success as a result of entrepreneurial talent, creativity, and energy, and whose success is in indicative of their current and future path. The finalists are Autumn Berry Inspired, and please stand when I call your name. I'm sorry I didn't do that with the last nominees. Okay, so the first finalist, Autumn Berry Inspired, is reducing the spread of an invasive tree created by creating a new food market for the berries that it produces and using it in cooking, wine, and food creations. You can find these berries locally at Big Grove and some desserts downtown, or the Blind Pig and Beer, or even at the Farmer's Market where they've helped to spread their message. Our next finalist is Oso Technologies. 
which is creating a plant moisture sensor that can talk to your smartphone or social media feeds. It was already mentioned this when, was an inspiration to a Letterman Top 10, but really that never would have happened if it hadn't been for the amount of time they put into making this company possible with investors and prototypes and iteration and raising $90,000 on Kickstarter with more than 900 backers in one month, gaining the national press. And Higher Med. Higher Med is making an innovative prescription pill bottle design to make it easier to access medicines for people with arthritis or aging fingers. And the winner is Oso Technologies. company Oso Technologies, uh, you know, we're creating our first product called Plant Link. And the way that product works is you put some sensors uh, in your garden or your house plants and they detect the soil moisture level. And then from there it's going to relay that information back to a base station and the base station communicates with our website. And from there it can either send you an alert and let you know, hey, it's time to water your tomato plants. Or if your plants are outside and you have our optional valve, uh, it can actually turn the valve on and automatically water all your plants for you. They can log in, they can find out the status of the plants, they can figure out how much soil moisture is there, they can get specialized alerts. Right, so they get like, text messages, emails, push notifications on an app for a smartphone. You can even have it set up an automatic calendar appointment for you so that you remember to water your plants at your office when you get there on Thursday morning. So it was exciting to get that first prototype working. Uh, it, was, it was a lot of fun to get my friends on board and have them be just as enthusiastic or sometimes more enthusiastic than me about the idea. Champaign, Urbana is a great community. You know, everybody who lives here, you know, has to enjoy the kind of the small town feel, but there's a lot of really cool amenities too with the university and all the different things that are you can do on campus with entertainment and all that. But more importantly, when you're starting a company, it's a great place to be because you have access to all these people in a pretty tight-knit community that's really easy to enter into. We've really benefited from being able to get plugged in really easily and directly with a lot of the great people here in town. Thank you so much. Uh, we're very honored to receive this award. I'd like to thank our other finalists as well and all the other great student startups that we get to talk to uh, through our journey here at Illinois. Uh, we definitely want to thank the university and the uh, entire Research Park community. Uh, we wouldn't be where we are today without all the great people that we've been able to uh, piggyback on and talk to that have been there and done that uh, and helped us out through this whole journey. We'd like to thank our families and all the people who have invested their time and resources into uh, making us successful. Thank you very much. Congratulations. The next award is the New Venture Award, which recognizes an organization formed within the past three years who's demonstrated success, entrepreneurial talent, creativity, and energy, and whose future su success is imminent. The finalists are Synistic, which is developing revolutionary acoustic technology to automatically track wildlife or environmental impact studies, reducing time and expense in the development process and improving accuracy. Their devices are also making it possible to improve sound detection in vehicles and other locations with background noise and a need for precision. Next finalist is Empress Interactive, a mobile application development company that merged the artistic craft of letterpress art artistry with an iPad to create a new platform for the creative community. They've also developed applications for the University of Chicago Press. The products have been applauded in USA Today, Forbes, Fast Company, TechCrunch, and even used in a Valentine's Day campaign for advertising for Apple's new iPad Mini. And the next finalist is Spinlight Studio, who saw an opportunity to increase educational engagement for kids by developing smartphone and tablet applications. The company has produced products with some of the highest educational app rankings in the iTunes store, including Alphatox, which was highlighted on the Today Show by Selene Moonfrog. But more importantly, I'd like to talk, take a moment to read one of the quotes from one of their customers. The customer says, a few months ago and several hundred virtual roads ago, my son Bodhi and I had uh, come across a ge geography drive app and installed it on our family's iPad. 
Buddy is six years old and currently struggling by surviving his way through first grade. He was diagnosed with an autistic condition at 18 months. My wife and I have been working with schools and specialists ever since to give him the education, social structure, and age-appropriate behaviors that do not come naturally to him. The game has unlocked something inside of Bodhi. The straightforward gameplay and user interface, its ability to diversify the way facts are presented and tested, and the rewards available for completing portions of the country are outstanding and ideal for a, ch for a child like my son. The ultimate moment for me was a week ago when I watched him complete the Flagstaff flag quiz and he nailed all 50 flags without any assistance and didn't miss a single one. And the winner is... Oh, video, sorry. Uh, sorry about that, all the drama. Uh, the winner is Spin Light Street. We started uh, in 2000, been around for a while, um, but we started as an advertising agency. I'm a graphic designer. We've always been a you know, design-centered, creative company. Two years ago, we started making apps for kids, and we've uh, nearly reached up there, so that's movie. We're really exiting one business model and moving into a completely different one. So we have Alpha Tots, Alley Tots, and Table Tots. Alpha Tots covers the alphabet in a unique way where um, we take the kids get to play a neat little activity for the reference use letter. And Tally Tots, similarly, it's a they get to play a little activity to represent each quantity. And so they, they learn the numbers from uh, 1 to 20, essentially. We have on the older end of the spectrum, Operation Math, which is a math game that uh, mixes is doing math with a spy team that our, our latest that we released was Geography Drive and it covers geography in a real, very general way. And so it's, uh, I think that's pretty much fun for all ages. Uh, and people have really responded well to that one. We hear often that kids are learning, they don't even know they're learning because they're just, this is fun. The way we design apps is very intuitive. I mean, we're, we're very much focused on, you know, high quality presentation and, and things that are engaging. We're all kind of kids at heart still, and we, I, I still know how to play with toys, and, and that's very easy for me to do. So I think having, you know, staying closely in touch to our, you know, kids and understanding what, what makes us great helps us make good products. We really do have a sense that we're just getting started with this. So I think, yeah, I think there's a, a lot of fun stuff ahead. So much fun the last two years. We're, you know, this is a it was a big change for our company, but uh, and it's a blast. We're, we're uh, we get letters like this from uh, like about Brody and uh, you know that something we totally didn't expect that to you know actually impact you know kids with these games we're making. And you know it kind of feels like we're getting paid to play, but um, but you know I think we're doing something important. I feel like we're you know making a real impact and. Um, so I we just thank you very much for this, and uh, thanks to Mason and Clark and Bourbon County, a lot of the nice built-in testers with their kids, and uh, <laughs> they, they help us out quite a bit. So uh, yeah, thank you very much. The next award is the Entrepreneur Advocacy Award, which recognizes an individual in the community who has actively encouraged, coached, and mentored entrepreneurs in our community. The first finalist is Alex Ruggieri. He's the host of Central Illinois Business Radio and the one-on-one -on -one with Alex Ruggieri show. I bet a good number of you have been on one of his programs. In this role, he interviews and showcases a wide range of entrepreneurs and innovators in our community. He proactively finds companies, researches them, comes up with excellent questions, and really gets to know their personal story and provides exposure to in our community of all the wonderful things that are happening and really gets people on the roadmap. The next finalist is Andy Singer. He is the director of the Technology Entrepreneur Center. But that's just a side job for Andy. He's also an accomplished electrical engineering professor, and he founded a company called Inner Symbol that was then acquired by Finisar, remained and grew in our community. And he also is starting a new venture with more partners. All of this while being a tireless leader at the University of Illinois for student entrepreneurs, creating new programs, event ideas, and bringing the best from around the country to our community. 
And the next finalist is Dennis Beard and Tim Hare from Sarah Ventures. Tim left his role as CEO of iSight and decided to pay it forward for future entrepreneurs in the local area by joining Dennis Beard from Open Prairie Ventures to create a new venture capital and entrepreneurial consulting firm. They raised a seed stage fund and now have invested in more than a dozen local companies in Champaign-Urbana and allowed them to begin their new operations. They've also been mentors and frequent speakers and are always volunteering their time whenever asked. And the winner is Andy Singer. Tech is a technology entrepreneur center, and it's a, a unit within the College of Engineering at the University of Illinois. It's been around since 2000. As director, that means that I get to help oversee a lot of the activities, but we've got a great staff that really makes sure that all the activities operate flawlessly and, and provide impact. It's always a lot of fun to see what the students come up with in um, the new venture competition. And, and a lot of the activities that we have um, sort of prepare the students, whether it's in our courses or our, our uh, extracurricular uh, activities, it prepares the students to, to participate in something like that. We certainly uh, have a lot of kids that will come in and they'll get excited about you know, a web startup or a web app or something like that, and, and we're happy to help them uh, innovate in that direction. But the ones that really resonate with the core values of the University of Illinois and, and the direction of the College of Engineering uh, are the ones that are trying to solve big problems, trying to solve grand challenges. Those are the kind of kids that you get really excited about, and, and it's great to see you know, that kind of passion really poured into, into projects. And you know, if you look at, at entrepreneurship programs at MIT or Stanford or Cal places that you know really claim to have a real center of, of mass in entrepreneurship they don't have anywhere near the kind of real passion towards humanity that, that our students have and you, know, you see these great things that these people are doing and yeah that's because we've, we've got a great staff that, that really enjoys rolling up their sleeves and helping students to, to realize you know, their dreams or, or to expose them to the opportunities that are you know, well beyond what you might find working in a big company. Thanks so much, and, and this, this award really belongs to the staff of the Technology Entrepreneur Center and to the students that work with us and bring great ideas in and just make coming to work every day so much fun. Um, the community, uh, the entrepreneurship ecosystem on our campus is really spectacular. It's just a great, it's a great honor to be part of this and, and it's great to be um, able to share this with the staff. Thanks very much and thanks to my family. Our next award is the Economic Development Impact Award, which recognizes those that have successfully commercialized innovations while demonstrating a commitment to local economic impact and an em emphasis on beneficial outcomes. The finalists in this category are the Midwest Underground Technology. It's a company out of Dewey, Illinois, that works on telecommunication, works with telecommunication companies and government agencies. They install, construct, maintain countless communications towers and now wind turbines that dot our skies. They ranked in the Inc. 5000 not just once, but for six years running and employ more than 100 people. The Champaign Organization of Developers and Engineers, or CODE, was formed by local software engineers that were inspired to work together to attract technology companies to locate in Champaign County. This group of more than 200 participants has, participants has worked to sell the merits of our community as volunteers. They contacted hundreds of companies using their own LinkedIn accounts, creative ideas, finding people with University of Illinois connections, tracking technologies, and asking recruiters to please consider opening a location here versus staying on the coast. UC to be a transformational community effort that is bringing leading fiber optic communications infrastructure to Champaign-Urbana, creating fiber rings that serve our community centers and disadvantaged populations. The project is made possible by a $22.5 million grant from the U.S. Department of Commerce. But that would not have been possible without the tireless efforts of those who volunteered and had the foresight to go after this innovation for our community. UCDB is an intergovernmental consortium of the University of Illinois and the cities of Urbana and Champaign. Congratulations to CODE.
Code is the champagne organization of developers and engineers, which grew out of an effort of a group of engineers who wanted to attract companies to Champaign-Urbana. And this started when Motorola closed their facilities in 2007, but more formally has only recently turned into the group, the small group of people who are uh, advocating attracting companies to Champaign. When the opportunity is given to people that they can get a set of people that are all interested in software development and they're all highly trained engineers, that was what really attracts people. So uh, Yahoo came in and hired 120 people out of the group from Motorola. Qualcomm came in and hired about a dozen people out of that group. Um, later on, when uh, Yahoo had some additional layoffs, the group got together again and attracted Newstar to the community. When someone contacts an engineer saying, would you like to come work for me, the response going back is, I sure would, but why don't you open an office here? And then we try to give them the pitch of great community, strong technical background, lots of engineers, uh, great university, you can hire a bunch of interns. All of these things play toward the strengths of the community to try and attract the company here. And again, uh, once a company sees that they can have as many interns as they want, they can have as much talent as they want, they can work with the university, they can do research projects with the university, it's a fantastic opportunity for these companies, some of which get it, some of which don't, but those who do really are very interested. So many of us care deeply about the community and, and, and want to see it grow and want to see it prosper that this is something we were doing anyway. It's not something we had to be told to do. It's not. It's just something we wanted to do. We want to see the community grow and prosper and have more companies here. And if we did that, everybody wins. I'd like to uh, accept this on behalf of everyone in code. Uh, it's been... Um, busy couple of years and we really appreciate the support from everyone in the tech community all the software engineers all the hardware engineers the university uh, the EDC uh, it's a great place to be and we're looking to get some more companies and hopefully some big names you organize pretty soon thanks very much Our next award is the Entrepreneurial Excellence in Management Award, which recognizes those that have demonstrated managerial acumen and skill in assembling resources, creating an organization, decision making under uncertainty, being forward looking, implementing action plans, and problem solving. The finalists are Charlie Lee from AAC Labs, who founded and grew his local nutrition supplement testing company successfully for more than 10 years, then sold his company recently to UK based Intertech and since then has further grown it in Champaign. Al Fleener, Fleener from Surface 51, who grew his one-man marketing operation into a leading regional communications and marketing firm. His newest expanded company operation shows off his creative magic in the Blue Line Station building on Neal Street, just north of downtown Champaign, where he transformed a warehouse into a hip studio. His expectation for his team goes beyond being just super talented and creative, he also says they must be tenacious, curious, and have a natural whatever-it-takes attitude. And the next finalist is Chris Harbert from Waterborne Environmental, who started a new division here for a Virginia-based company as a one-man also, and grew that operation to now have about 30 employees in the research park. He employs PhD-level engineers, technicians, and students to consult agricultural products on environmental impact, watershed modeling has worked with the National Center for Supercomputing Applications. Congratulations to Chris Harbin. I'm a manager of our office of Waterborne Environmental, and uh, we're a growing company. Have somewhere between 20 and 30 employees, depending on the time of the year. We really focus on um, delivering high quality um, consulting services to uh, agriculture and all different types of seed manufacturers, crop protection companies, and then different supply chain areas of, of ag. The, the great thing about our environment and how we've created this environment at, at the office where we're 
we're a team of peers. And my hope that on any given day, I can go to work and do something really fun and interesting. And I think that's what gets me out of bed in the morning, you know, is this, this feeling that I can actually do something very fun, very interesting for us, but particularly in this office and, and in this business of consulting, it's really about the people. It's about the people that we are able to hire and really the culture that we form within the business. I rely on, on honesty with employees. I think that's critical that they see you for who you are. Um, I think leading by example and, and showing them that's not only hard work, that's going home at five sometimes, you know, just balancing your personal life and your, and your work life. And then also um, just being self-aware and having that attitude of, of realizing um, your flaws, your weaknesses, your shortcomings, and not trying to put up a facade around them, but embracing it instead, you know, trying to get that to, to all the employees that we have and, and try, to, try to foster that environment for everyone so that everyone feels accepted and part of the group and feels like it's a home, a place that they can form a career. Thanks, this is a, a great honor and um, you know, a great town to, to come to. I, I left here after um, studies at the university, went to Washington DC area, and um, you know, I was miserable in traffic and everything else. I'm trying to think, how am I gonna grow a business here? You know, and, and uh, getting back to central Illinois and back to Champaign was such an important part of growing this business, finding quality people out of the university. Um, nurturing them and then you know having such a supportive environment even just the ability something no one's mentioned tonight of, of home ownership for employees you know coming out of school a few years old in their 20s actually being able to buy and afford a home something that you can do in Champaign a great place to have business and then also you know for me so important is just having a stable home life and trying to facilitate that um, you know environment of um, of, of leadership and interest and, and uh, you know my wife is a, a jewelry artist and, and such a stable part of, of, of my ability to go to work and focus and uh, have that stability behind me so thank you to her and thank you to all the employees who, who make managing easy thanks for the evening is longevity through innovation, which recognizes those enterprise and individuals that have sustained success in the direct result of continued innovation over many years. And the final is our Rich Maisel. I just put his name on this, I guess, because if you know him, you know he's a force. He's done three startup technology companies, and everybody who's ever been in enterprise works knows Dr. Maisel. He has used countless ideas that he's come up with for new innovations, sustainable, clean tech technologies, and surprised everyone when he attracts millions of dollars in venture capital money, or SBIR award upon SBIR award, and recently, $4.5 million in an ARPA E award for a team that had fewer than 10 employees at the time. And he did this all through his newest company, After Retirement Dioxide Materials. And not only has he done this work to inspire his own creativity, but a group of young scientists, females that have uh, had an opportunity to lead in this organization that we've seen, and also many that have been given a chance to be able to publish against the work that they've produced in breakthrough clean tech products. Waters Electric, this company out of Ram Tool is not only an electrical and HVAC contractor, but one that uses in a day-to-day -day life on TV. But they also have been recognized with their own award. Their founder, Gene Zimmerman, has also gotten his own Emmy Awards. So this little jewel in our community, he sang two, I knew it was awards, um, <laughs> keeps growing. And they just bought a new facility at Village at the Crossing to enable this team to continue to grow and prosper. Congratulations to Cobalt Digital. Cobalt is a company in Champaign, and we make equipment that makes the uh, broadcast television industry work. So our customers would be like a Fox or an ESPN, ABC or CBS, the big names that everybody's heard of. 
um, we build the machines and the software that go in their transmission pads to make uh, to make the broadcast signal get from the camera to the home. It's a, a very interesting business because it, it touches everybody's lives, but it's also quite a bit behind the scenes, and most people don't know that much about it. We really pride ourselves on doing every step of the engineering ourselves. So that could be everything from you know, designing the metal box that the product might fit in, all the way to the last piece of software that's installed in it before it, it goes out to the customer. We do all of the final assembly and testing and shipping right from our facility in Urbana. Uh, and we do all of the uh, design and engineering from a facility in Champaign. And then uh, later this year, we're actually merging those two together, and everything will be run out of Champagne. Cobalt is a company that does have a lot of longevity, and it's a company that's existed for 15 years. And up until the last few years, the growth path was definitely very slow, but it always was growth. So it's been very conservative, solid, and stable. Um, and I think only now is it getting to the point where it has a, has a large, larger presence in the community. I also want to thank the community and the University of Illinois. The bulk of us went to school here, and the bulk of our graduates came from the University of Illinois in the engineering department. And some of them are quite young, but they have come up with brilliant ideas to get things going forward. Cobalt landed in Champaign-Urbana because at the time I was working in New York and Los Angeles building television facilities, and I wanted a home where somebody could enjoy the community, a home where there was a great college. I really want to thank the University of Illinois, but I also want to thank the people of Cobalt Digital. It's their work, it's their interest, it's their creative talent that builds the company that makes it happen. So that was Kevin Moore, by the way, who's our VP of Engineering. Thank you, Kevin. Also the guys at the Engineering, Sales, uh, Production, Tony Clark, who also is a graduate of the University of Illinois, started this uh, business with me, and we just want to thank you very much for the award. to all our finalists and winners this evening for all that you do in Champaign-Urbana. Thank you for being wonderful. And thank you for everyone attending and supporting them. We're so proud of everyone and so glad to have this community come together to recognize them. So please join us in celebrating with a reception outside. And we do ask our honorees to stick around for some group photos. And if you haven't been photographed individually, we'd like to do that after the program concludes. Thank you, everyone. Have a great evening.